The Los Angeles Rams have had such an interesting ride here to the Super Bowl, and specifically general manager Les Snead. The mistakes he's made along the way and how he's learned from those mistakes, it's such a fascinating story of how they've now gotten here and gotten back to the Super Bowl. And I just wanted to kind of break down exactly how this happened, because it's really unique. And a lot of people have kind of put the super team label on them, which I don't really think is fair, and I'll get into that in a second. Some of it just comes down to definitions. But let's talk about Les Need, because he was hired in 2012 as the Rams general manager. And one of the first moves he made, interestingly enough, was trading for draft capital. They had the second overall pick, and they traded that second overall pick to the, at the time, called the Washington Redskins, uh, who would draft Robert Griffin III. Uh, and they returned, they received three first rounders and uh, a second in that pick. So you're thinking, hey, okay, that's good draft capital. And it kind of does seem to make sense. If you don't love the quarterbacks, trade back and get some draft capital. There is logic behind it. What didn't work out was the guys who they ended up hiring in that time span, in those next few drafts. I mean, the, the first rounders they were getting, uh, Alec Ogletree, Tavon Austin, Greg Robinson, Michael Brockers. Like, you know, like Ogletree and Brockers were fine players, but they weren't stars necessarily, and they weren't really moving the needle too much. Now, in that stretch with one of their own picks, they did get Aaron Donald. So obviously, that was a, a key win for them. And if you, quite frankly, if you traded the number two overall pick just for Aaron Donald, it's worth it. But the reality is they had one home run and a lot of strikeouts in that stretch, which kind of maybe was a eye-opener first need to kind of say, okay, maybe we don't need that many first-round picks. Maybe we don't need first-round picks all the time, and we can be willing to trade them, which you would certainly see them willing to do. But, you know, with Aaron Donald, they uh, also in the 2015 draft, they got guys like Rob Havenstein and Todd Gurley. So they're adding some talent, and now they move to Los Angeles. And there's clearly a shift once they move to Los Angeles. There's that first section of Sneed's tenure, and then there's this second section. And I think there's a third section as well, which we'll get into obviously later. But let's talk about the second section now. So it's 2016 now. The Rams... They they saw what happened with the RG3 trade, right? They gave up all this draft, or they got all this draft capital, but the Washington football team, at least for a second there, seemingly had a franchise quarterback. Now, RG3 fell off, so you could argue it, it didn't help anybody, but I think the Rams kind of realized in that moment, if we get a franchise quarterback, there's really no way you can overpay for that, and I think that that's probably true. So they decided to say, you know what, we're going to give up two first-round picks, and two second rounders, and two third rounders, actually, for the first overall pick to get Jared Goff, which is interesting because they would eventually go on to give up less draft capital for a different quarterback, but we'll get into that in a second. So to get Jared Goff, right, this is the guy. This is kind of the way that they're going to, you know, get things going and going in the right direction, and it did. I mean, not immediately. The first year, Jeff Fisher and Jared Goff were a mess together, but you quickly, uh, you know, they, they did get Tyler Higby in that draft as well. So uh, there you go. But then they would go on to sign Sean McVay. They added Andrew Whitworth for just three years, $34 million. Not a, a massive deal, although a, a good deal. And again, uh, contracts are continuing to rise and go up. So that's also a factor. But with this, this was kind of the, the beginning of an era, it felt like. This is the Jared Goff era. They went on to make the playoffs in Sean McVay's first year and then after adding a couple other additions in the draft because they they drafted well that's another aspect is you can get talent in the draft even without first rounders they got cooper cup they got brian allen and they would go to the super bowl in 2018 largely due to these moves but they lost right so that's kind of the thing is it seemed like things were going well but you could also always sit here and argue if they didn't get lucky on that call to uh, against the Saints, do they even make the Super Bowl? Which, listen, luck's a part of football. You always you always need some breaks to go your way if you're going to get here. But still, they had that break, and it kind of made you feel like, was this kind of a phony Super Bowl run, especially with the way that the offense did fall apart in that Super Bowl? Didn't help that part of why they fell apart towards the playoffs was Todd Gurley just Stop playing well. Uh, he just wasn't, he was washed up at that point, which is weird when you have a young running back just get washed up that quickly, but that's also kind of how running backs work. Gurley and Jerry Goff were thought to be the future of the Rams, and now the question was, will either of them be able to, you know, 
even be a decent player again. In the next couple of years, they would eventually get rid of Todd Gurley. They did uh, one little fun note is they added Eric Weddle uh, in this stretch. So uh, that would come back later. But really, the way that they used free agency, which this is why I don't like the super team label. Typically, I view super team as a team that largely builds through free agency, that's not what the Rams have done at all. They've used free agency as a way to get role players and really a way to kind of find guys and who maybe aren't really thought of to be that great and turn them into better players once they put them in the right system. Darius Williams was claimed off waivers in 2018 and was signed as the sixth quarterback on their depth chart. Obviously, he's gone on to be a very impactful player for the Rams. You have Leonard Floyd, who was, you know, they gave him some money, one-year $10 million deal. It wasn't nothing, but it was kind of a flyer a little bit. He only had 18.5 sacks in the previous five seasons with Chicago, but he went on to have 20 in two years with the Rams. You have someone like Sean Robinson, uh, who they uh, only gave $5 million a year to, who's been a really key impactful player for them. They also were continuing to build depth through the draft. They got Greg Gaines in 2019. They got Cam Akers and Van Jefferson in 2020. So you're still continuing to build this roster and finding starters without these first round picks due to making smart free agency decisions. So not necessarily overspending, but just making the smart decisions and also just still being able to get solid starters in the second and third rounds of these drafts, sometimes even later. So it's really interesting team building strategy. If you don't have first round picks, you can make this work. Obviously, we also had the Jalen Ramsey uh, trade in this situation, which I think has helped them a lot. Having that elite corner matters a lot in football. It's a passing league. Get someone who can stop uh, these wide receivers. That, that makes sense and has really paid dividends for them. And that takes us to 2021. I think there's no denying that what the Rams had done in this stretch was really good. I mean, they were finding guys, like the Darius Williams move, that's a great move. I mean, and I'm a big fan of the idea of getting rid of these first rounders. Again, this is kind of the less need thing. Would you rather have all these extra first rounders, but you have to make sure you hit on them? Or would you rather not have them, but have a Jalen Ramsey, who you're, you know, you know is going to be good? Uh, they would rather clearly have that Jalen Ramsey type. So because of stuff like that, I, I do think that this is kind of what has continuous, continuously kept them competitive, along with having a good head coach and Sean McVay, who can coach these guys up. But they couldn't get over the hump. And, you know, at the end of the 2020 season, or excuse me, at the end of the uh, 2019 season, when, uh, which it was in 2020, they would lose to the Green Bay Packers in the divisional round. And it kind of just felt like, yeah, this, this is a good team. This isn't the great team. They needed something to put them over the hump. And that's what they did in 2021. They, quote unquote, went all in, which, you know, even the Twitter account uh, posted that they went all in and they lost a few games and everyone made fun of them. But this is what they did. They went all in, mostly with the, you know, starting with trading for Matt Stafford, who, as I mentioned, they actually gave up less draft capital to get Matt Stafford than they did to get Jared Goff in the first place. So that's kind of an interesting move. And quite frankly, the reason why I was a big fan of it at the time was because it's always a good idea to upgrade at the quarterback position. It can never be a bad move. It's hard. To, you can't overpay for a franchise quarterback, right? And they're getting a franchise quarterback in Matt Stafford, who it's not like he's 40. He, he's going to be here for a minute. So that's a great move right off the bat to get a, a Matt Stafford. Now, it wasn't universally loved at the time, and I think for good reason. I don't think it's unfair because you do look at the history of the NFL and it does seem like the easiest ways to get to the Super Bowl are to have an elite quarterback or to have a quarterback on a rookie deal. That tends to be the easiest way to get there, but it, it kind of gives you the biggest margin for error. But at the same time, the Rams felt like, well, this gives us a better chance to get there with Matt Stafford, so we're going to take that and we can kind of make up that margin of error by making some other moves. You know, we'll trade for Von Miller, another guy who some people said they felt like they overpaid for, but uh, I think he's proven that they didn't. If anything, maybe they underpaid for him. Uh, they acquired Odell Beckham Jr. Some people said, eh, I don't know about that. A locker room cancer. Well, he's, he's, I don't know what he's doing in the locker room, but he's playing great on the field. And they even added Eric Weddle, which is just kind of that weird, fun, thing that they did. So they're going for it. They're willing to take chances. And that's what you have to do to win a Super Bowl. No one, 
No GM has ever won a Super Bowl by playing it safe with all of their selections. At certain points, you're going to have to take chances. The Rams have taken these chances, and it's really paid dividends. It's why they're back in the Super Bowl. So will all of this be enough to win the Super Bowl? That remains to be seen. But what can we learn about this whole, the way that the Rams operate, which, you know, it's kind of interesting how the Rams and the Bengals are both two teams that operate very differently than every other team. And I think I don't think it's a coincidence that they're the two teams in the Super Bowl. You do sometimes have to go against the grain to have some success. I think the clear thing that they've done is they've said, listen, we want the star players and we trust that we can find role players in other ways. We trust that we can find role players later in the draft and we can sign role players for maybe less money than they they feel like they deserve. So because they can do that and because they've been successful at it, well, now when they trade two first round picks for Matt Stafford, when they trade two first round picks for Jalen Ramsey, when they traded two first round picks, two second and two third round picks for Jared Goff, they were still able to be competitive and fill out the rest of their roster. And when they trade for guys like Von Miller and Odell, or they didn't trade for Odell, but they added Odell. And when you trade for someone like Von Miller, some people might say, well, it's an overpay, but you know who's not going to be benefiting with their second and third round picks in 2022? Literally every single team in 2021. Even if Von Miller only added very marginal value, it's still helping them this year. And at the end of the day, uh, if you're not going to try and win a Super Bowl this year, some other team is. So, and if next year, there's going to be a different team that goes all in. So, other teams are going to go all in. You have to pick a year to go all in as well, uh, I would think. And at least that's the way the Rams thought. And I think that's why they're here. So yeah, that's what I think of all this. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.